My wife, Susan, and I have been married for 33 years. I never could have imagined that the length and strength of our relationship would be due in part to a relationship lesson I received from a pig. The pig's name was Clyde. The lesson was painful. Clyde's story begins when Susan and I were dating. We were in the Yahoo stage of the relationship and I asked her to move in with me. She said, before I do that, there's something you need to know about me. Uh-oh. She said, I really love animals. My response, animals? I love animals too. Come on in, darling. She did. We ended up married. And over the years, we had every kind of animal you can imagine as a pet. All of them, except Clyde, were rescues. Just to give you an idea of what it was like. The rescued pit bull tried to kill the rescued cat, which I rescued by holding it above my head. Clawed from below, scratched from above, Susan heard my screams and rescued me. I have to admit, as I stood there bleeding, I felt really good when she said, oh, sweetheart, are you okay? But she was talking to the cat. That was okay. I realized that it's just easier to ride the horse in the direction it's going. Clyde the pig, on the other hand, was a horse of a different color. I can still remember Susan's words, honey, I would love to have a little pot-bellied pig. They're so cute, clean, quiet, and really smart. I thought to myself, smart? I'll show you smart. You want a pig? I want season tickets to the Colorado Rockies. She agreed way too quickly. And looking back, I made a bad trade. Oh, he was cute all right, until he ate all of my Beatles albums. Smart, he learned how to use his kitty litter immediately. However, when his unbeknownst to us farm pig genes kicked in, and he grew to be 250 pounds. We had to use a children's wading pool as his piggy litter. We kept it in the rec room. That worked for several years until Clyde got so fat, he thought it would be good enough if he just put his front feet in the litter box. Our rec room became the wrecked room. We had friends over on the 4th of July to watch the fireworks. While we were all out on the balcony, Clyde tipped over the table with the food, ate all of the food, and then threw up in front of the guests. Smart. He actually opened the refrigerator, pulled out a carton of eggs, opened the carton, cracked all 12 eggs with his tusk, <laughs> and sucked them dry. All of this was nothing compared to the ill-fated, disastrous trip over Wolf Creek Pass. We would put Clyde in the back of our suburban automobile and drive to our cabin in Southern Colorado. On this particular trip, my stepson brought a friend. The friend threw his backpack in with Clyde. The first three hours of the trip, uneventful. But as we went up Wolf Creek Pass, Clyde started snorting and squealing and running around in circles and developed the worst case of piggy diarrhea that you can imagine. It turns out Clyde had opened the kid's backpack and ate all of his cold medicine, NyQuil, Robitussin, etc. We had a crazed pig on our hands. Luckily, just over the pass, there was a tourist overlook where you could stop, park, and look at the beautiful valley far, far below. Susan got out of the car to go to the back and clean up after her darling pet. The next thing I knew, bang, I looked up in the rearview mirror, Clyde hit the back door, Susan was reeling backwards, and Clyde flew out the back of the Suburban. We had a pig on the run, or with the runs. To make matters worse, a tour bus from Texas had just pulled into the lot. 
They were exiting the bus as Clyde exited the Suburban. I heard a lady scream, it's a pig. Yes, lady, it is. I entertained those tourists for some time, chasing Clyde around that lot. I finally had him, my arms around him, ready to put him into the car. I slipped and fell on my back, Clyde on my chest, his legs churning in the air, and he was screaming like a pig. The tourists howling with laughter. At that moment, I had a very dark thought. I wanted to throw Clyde over the edge to his certain death below, but I knew I would be next. I did get him into the car using a trail of Fritos from Screaming Lady and got him in the car. We drove away in deafening silence. I started thinking immediately, what's the lesson here? What can I learn from all of this? I didn't get it right away. Two decades later, however, I can tell you that the pain of a pig is nothing when you compare it to the precious laughter that Susan and I now share, thanks to Clyde. The lesson, if you want to stay married, just love your spouse's pig in whatever form your personal Clyde may take. Madam Toastmaster.